Hey guys, this is Simon. How's everyone doing today? Let's talk about the thing that happened in the south part of China. I guess the majority of you already knew that recently our African community is having a pretty rough time in China. A lot of them got evicted from their apartments and they couldn't find a place to live because most hotels were told not to accept them. So some of them end up sleeping on the street, what was pretty horrible, right? And also a lot of like restaurants, shops, parks also don't welcome them. And I think this thing is not only applied to our African friend here, they also influence many other foreigners in China as well. Just several weeks ago, I actually helped some of my foreign friends in Shanghai to find hotels because most hotels don't welcome foreigners in Shanghai. I think the main issue for this problem is that a lot of foreigners, they haven't left China during this pandemic for the entire time, but they still got treated differently. I mean, if they just come back from overseas, then I think there shouldn't be issue. We can all agree that they should be put into quarantine, right? But if they are just like any other average Chinese folks living in China for the entire time, followed all the instruction, staying in their apartments, download their QR code, then they shouldn't be treated differently, right? Just imagine if the similar situation happened in the US, it's gonna be the total disaster, right? If the US government implement a similar policy, let's say in California, like no Asian are allowed to get into any parks, hotels, restaurants, then it's gonna be a total disaster for the government, right? It will probably become the most serious racism for the past several decades. Now, racism in China is indeed a very serious issue. Uh, it has a lot of reason behind this, but today I don't want to talk about racism because I feel like why this situation happened has more to do with the system we have. So I want to explain why this kind of thing can actually happen in China. Now, let me just make sure we are all on the same page. I'm not trying to justify this policy, okay? It is indeed morally wrong, like I have said. If the same situation happened to the Asian community in the US, it will be a total disaster. I also think no any other government official dare to put up this kind of policy because it will literally ruin their career. But in China, it will happen. It actually is quite often. So today, I want to help you to understand why this kind of thing will happen in China and hopefully help you to understand China a little bit better. Now, first of all, you guys already know that unlike the Western system uh, where the government is mainly decided by the popularity among its citizens, uh, that is, uh, if you want to become a president or a mayor, then you will at least try to get support from the majority of citizens, right? Uh, more people support you means more votes, more votes means it is more likely for you to get elected, right? In China, it is different. Some people believe that it is a, a meritocracy system, uh, which I think is, well, uh, not 100% accurate, but let's just say to a certain degree, it is one. So it's not about how popular you are among the general public, it's about your merits. But how do you value or quantify these merits? I'm not sure if they have a universal like KPI for everyone, but I think everyone in China knows that there are two things which are very crucial for an official's future. The first thing is the GDP of the regions that you are in charge of. Uh, that one is fairly self-explanatory, right? Because our country has spent a lot of attention to economic development for the past several decades. So if you can bring a huge economic increase for your region, then it is more likely for you to get promoted. I think it is also one of the reasons why China could develop fairly fast for the several, past several decades. Because if you want to have a better political opportunity, then you better achieve your GDP target assigned to you. Now the second thing is whether the region has any serious accident. Uh, if there was a serious accident that happened during your turn, let's say if there is a like, serious traffic accident that killed multiple people or some factory blow up because of some safety issues, then unless you have some very solid like uh, connection, otherwise you probably reach to the end of your political career because upholding the stability of the country is another crucial goal for our government. You probably won't lose your job, but you are not going to get promoted in your future career. So why I'm telling you this, why do this you know, meritocracy system has anything to do with the unfair treatment or those foreigner gods? If the number of infections rises again, then 
It means that we have to shut down offices and factories again and our people will be put back into quarantine which will further damage the economy of your region and you are going to be even more behind from this year's GDP target. Besides that, in China, controlling the pandemic has already become the highest priority for all local government officials. So if everywhere else made it under control, but the number in your places rises again, then it's going to be considered as a huge accident that can cause instability for the country, right? So officials will spare no efforts to make sure this thing is under control. Uh, that's why you see a lot of like radical action has been implemented in China during this pandemic, such as like blocking roads and locking people inside their apartments. You may ask, like, won't those actions upset the local citizens and breach some individual rights? Well, probably yes but unlike western country the priority for our official is not to gain popularity among average people the priority for them is to achieve the kpi assigned by this so-called meritocracy system that is also why foreigners have experienced such unfair treatment i mean the government could have done a better job you know uh, maybe check their passports first and see whether they have left country uh, during this pandemic and then decide what to do accordingly and maybe coordinate with some hotels and make sure everybody has a place to live before kicking everyone out of their apartment right but why do they forget to do that like i've said before that's not their priority their priority is to make sure the number don't rise again any other action can be done in order to achieve that priority well actually this kind of things happen all the time in china uh, we actually give them a chinese name called uh, i don't know if it makes sense in english but if you want to directly translate it uh, i guess you can call it like one cup policy it might sound confusing just based on the words so let me try to explain to you. Uh, imagine if you have a malignant tumor somewhere on your hand. Then your doctor tries to get rid of it for you. Uh, there are two ways to do it. The first way, he can give you a CT scan, then ask a bunch of experts to identify where the tumor is. Then maybe use some laser to meticulously cut that tumor off, right? This is probably the ideal option. It won't hurt other tissues around the tumor, but it is super slow. It takes a lot of time and resource and efforts. Now that's why there's the second option. Just grab a knife and then just one cut, completely chop off the hand. That also works, right? It's fast, it's easy to implement, but it will hurt a lot of innocent tissue and even damage the entire hand. That's why we call the policy one cup policy. Why does this policy exist? Because the meritocracy system only evaluates whether doctor have get rid of the cancer, but didn't take anything else into its consideration. And this kind of one cup policy actually took place in China all the time. I just give you several examples. Okay, before this incident took place among a foreign community, Wuhan residents also experienced similar things. So after Wuhan city got locked down, Wuhan residents received huge discrimination across the entire country. It doesn't matter whether you have gone back to Wuhan during this pandemic. If you drive a car with Wuhan license plate, then a lot of city and region won't even allow you to get in. Uh, a lot of people end up like spending weeks on the highways. And if you got like Wuhan accident or you are holding a Wuhan ID card, then a lot of hotels, restaurants, parks, shops won't welcome you either. Um, why did these things happen? It's about priority, right? The priority for all regional officials is to control the spread. No one is going to risk their career in order to keep Wuhan residents happy because that's not their priority. Now, several years ago, there was a fire accident in a low-class apartment building in Beijing, which killed multiple persons. Uh, it was reported that the building was illegally built, which means the building was built without government's approval. And also the building failed to meet a fire safety standard. So in order to prevent this kind of accident from happening again, the government completely tore down all similar buildings in the nearby region which forced tens of thousands of low-class workers to move out and some of them couldn't find a place to live. 
I mean, there's nothing wrong with the government to make sure that all apartments building meet the fire safety standard, right? But I think we should also help those low-class workers to find place to live. But unfortunately, the priority for the government is not to help those low-class workers. The priority for them is to make sure those accidents don't happen again. Now, maybe just give you guys one more example. In China, a lot of cities have completely banned motorcycles. Why do they ban motorcycles? Well, because motorcycle is considered to be dangerous to ride. And indeed, a lot of riders, they don't follow the traffic rules, which cause a lot of issues in China. So in order to effectively decrease the number of accidents caused by motorcycles, a lot of cities choose to ban all motorcycles from the roads. But what about riders who follow the instruction and want to ride motorcycle in the future? Well, that's unfortunate for them because the priority for the government is not to make sure all those riders are happy. The priority for the government is to make sure the decrease of the number of accidents. Similar things also happened in Beijing before. So last year, in order to solve the traffic issue, the Beijing government made an announcement saying that every year, uh, cars with non-Beijing license plates will only be allowed to drive in the city for about like 84 days. Beyond that, the car is not allowed to show up on the Beijing streets. We all know it is super difficult for Beijing locals to get a Beijing license plate. Uh, first of all, you will go through a lottery system and then the chance for you to get a license plate is very slim. So a lot of Beijing residents end up like buying a license plate in other regions. People have estimated that there are about like 1 million non-Beijing license plate cars in the city, but now they can't drive those cars after 84 days so what should they do with their car after 84 days and what if they really need to drive after 84 days well i don't know if the government has thought about this but if they don't it is not very surprising because the priority for the government is to solve the traffic issue right because that will affect their kpi for sure this kind of one cup policy happened all the time in china that's because of the so-called meritocracy system we have which makes the government put more focus on things that may have an influence on their KPI. Well, of course, there are also some advantages for this kind of system, like if building public infrastructure and increasing economy become one of their KPIs, then everyone will work really hard to achieve those targets, right? But we should also think about how to prevent officials from only focusing on those things that may affect their career but forget about things that is not on their KPI. But those things may also be very crucial for our society. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I uh, hope my video helped you better understand how things work in China. And if you like the video, please hit the like button for more content from this ordinary Chinese dude. Please subscribe to my channel. And once again, thank you so much for everyone's support and love. And yeah, catch you on the next one. Peace.